Yo, what is up guys? Shamus is back here. I'm back with another unboxing for you. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, but if you already are, welcome back now. Today's unboxing, we got an epic diorama of Roranoa Zoa against Basil Hawkins from the One Piece anime. And this statue is by Jamei Palace, a one six scale licensed company. And this was an epic battle, by the way. This was during the Wano arc, and I love that arc, by the way. But guys, I can't wait to see what's inside this box. This thing weighs about 55 pounds, so let's see what's inside. If you guys are wondering where I get a lot of my anime and manga merch, check out the links in the description. It really helps out the channel. This statue right here, I know they have some available on Sideshow, also Spec Fiction Shop, so really great websites, by the way. So we got the cement gray styrofoam box inside. It looks like we got three layers, and I like the lime green Velcro straps, but let's take a closer look. So you guys know, I love when we activate glove mode right here, so... We got gloves, we got the envelope with the certificate, and we have the assembly instructions right here. We also got a little picture of how the statue is gonna look like. All right, let's open this thing. All right, you two. These are all the pieces we're about to put together, and this is a lot. I'm assuming the base is right there. We see various red pieces. I see Zoro's sword, pieces of Hawkins, and that piece right there is huge. Here's my hand in comparison to how big this piece is. And we have Zoro's main body right there. So I can't wait to put all this together. So if we take a look at the assembly instructions, this is a preview of how the statue is gonna look like. We see all the packaging right here. So we have about 31 different pieces. So as you flip through, it just give you the directions on where all the pieces go. Now I'm not gonna lie guys, this looks like a lot but i accept any challenge and it just like it's gonna be epic at the end let's go all right youtube we're not playing around today glove mode is on so this is how the bottom of the base looks like it looks like we have number 176 out of 321 for the us not too heavy but then again this is just the sub base and then on this side of the statue, you see all the white parts, the statue's battery operated. So we're gonna get some dope light up features. So the first six pieces we're gonna put on the statue is this clear resin right here, this red pinkish looking color. And I think this is representing fire from the battle that they had. And I just love clear resin guys, it looks so amazing. You just really notice the vibrant colors in this clear resin right here. And this is the biggest piece we have right here for the red clear resin. It has a peg on it to support it. YouTube, this piece right here is super heavy. So we had to connect various pieces onto this piece right here before we can get it on the base. Like Hawkins arms, I think the hair on the back and yo, I had to do this off camera because it was so heavy. Oof, YouTube. I don't know if my back can handle any more of these unboxings. All right, let's start getting some pieces on the scarecrow right here. This is the first piece we're about to put onto it. See the shading right there. Then we have this piece right here. It looks like various pieces of straw making a rope or something. And then we have these beads right here or a necklace. This is gonna go on the scarecrow also. With this piece right here, looks like hair wrapped in a little ponytail right there. You see the shading on this piece also. So I'm loving what I'm seeing so far, YouTube. And here we have the hair for the scarecrow right here. You see all the white, the green coloring, the shading, the hair just like it's going everywhere. I love it. So on the other side, we're gonna connect various pieces to the hair. Now we're about to put the hair on the face of the scarecrow right here. And doesn't this look scary, YouTube? This is the definition of a scarecrow, YouTube. That is crazy. He has a big peg right here. He's gonna go behind the scarecrow to attach him. Ooh, YouTube. I'm telling you, next unboxing, I'm gonna put a back brace on. So for the sub base right here, I forgot to put on one of the red clear resin pieces. All right, so I was able to get this clear piece of resin on. I had to take off the whole scarecrow just to get this thing on and that was not easy. Unfortunately, a piece of his bead necklace broke off from the scarecrow. I have to super glue this back on. All right, let's get the last of these clear resin pieces on. 
And here we can see Zoro's main body right there with the Wano outfit. You see the muscle definition, the scar on his chest, those arms. You see texture in his outfit. You see the quadriceps and the leg muscles. So this is beautiful right here. This is a one six scale and he has a peg on his foot right there. So with these three pieces right here, they're all gonna go through Zoro's belt. Give you guys a close look at the quality right there and the paint application just looks beautiful. Then we have this piece right here. I think these are called scabbards with the swords going. Again, paint job is beautiful. And then we have this piece right here with the sword inside of the scabbard. You can see the paint, you see how the handles look like. And this is amazing. And it kind of magnetizes to his waist also. You two, look how clean this sword looks right here. And this thing feels like I'm holding metal right here. Quality just feels that good and that paint application. And then the next sword, this one right here might be my favorite. Check out the paint on the blade right there with the handle. Man, Jermaine Palace. You guys can't tell me they don't make quality pieces right here. And for this delicate piece right here, we're gonna put it on one of Zoro's swords. Take a look at this facial scope right here. This is one of the best facial scopes that I've seen for Zoro. Just look at all the details on his face, the wrinkles in the middle, the scar going down his left eye, his facial expression. Man, even the hair looks beautiful. Got the earrings. This is how you do a facial scope for Zoro. And for the Scarecrow's hand, we have five different nail pieces right here. You guys see the quality of that? It doesn't look cheap at all. You just gotta squeeze them in tight and they all just stay there in place. They're not moving. All right guys, we finally put the statue all together now and when I say Jamaica Palace makes you work to put one of these statues together, they make you work. But when you see it all put together, you just tell yourself it was worth it. This statue is beautiful right here. And what already catches my attention is the vibrant colors, the red and the blue clear resin. And these two characters right here, I think are badass. A lot of people love Zoro, Zoro with Joro and his Wano name, going up against Vassal Hawkins. He's on the base right here two pirates from the worst generation. When I first got introduced to Basil Hawkins, I thought he was a badass, so I'm pretty glad he got included in this statue. I know a lot of people want a Zoro standalone, but when I seen this statue went up for pre-order, I knew it was for me. Jermaine Palace makes some of the best dynamic statues in the anime game, and this right here is crazy. When it comes to the dimensions, he's at about 24 inches in height, 23 inches in width, and 19 inches in depth, and the statue weighs 49 pounds, so this is a big, heavy statue right here. Even though the assembly process was hard, Jermaine Palace always does good with the quality of putting it together. They gave us gloves, we activated glove mode, and the statue has light-up features, so we got a plug-in right here. I can't wait to test that out. They give you the duster, we also have a certificate, the assembly instructions. I like how the assembly instructions had the pieces numbered in the packaging, so that made my life a whole lot easier. This statue right here is depicting an epic battle that Zoro and Hawkins had during the Wano arc, where Zoro's using his two sword style, Nigiri Tower Climb Ripple, and that move was badass, by the way. You see the slash effects from the blue resin, and I think that Jamea Palace got the pose on Zoro just perfect with their representing that scene. With Basil Hawkins down here, 
he had the devil fruit that gave him the ability to manipulate straws so he can use those straws to turn to a scarecrow he can also create a scarecrow from his sword so that's what you see what he's doing in the base right here now this scarecrow ability that hawkins is doing in the base i know in the anime it has a red pinkish aura around it so i think jimmy palace might have been trying to represent that with this red pinkish resin right here either that or it's coming from the attack that zoro was doing so guys i'm really loving this statue right here the only thing that annoyed me was the assembly instructions especially because i broke a piece of part of the necklace on the scarecrow broke off that's the one engineering flaw i see in this statue it seemed like it's pretty hard to get this scarecrow on without breaking the necklace but everything else is beautiful we're about to go more in depth with this statue starting off with the base and working our way up and I gotta show you guys this light up feature. All right guys, before we go in depth with the statue, we gotta check out the certificate. Here's the envelope with the Jumei Palace logo right here. Got the wax seal in the back. So here's your certificate right here. Roanoa Zoa versus Hawkins. We have number 176 at 321 from the US and I never get tired of looking at these things. And then here we have the coin here, depicting the statue we just unboxed and this feels premium, it's like we're holding metal in our hands. Here's the back, number 176. So here we have the sub base right here, and this looks different from the other Jamaica Palace statues that I've seen. You got the Zoro Joe versus Hawkins and the silver. And the texture looks like the straw ability that Hawkins can do. I love the detail that we see. And if we work our way up, we see that bright red pinkish resin right here. This is one of my favorite parts about the statue. I just think it looks beautiful, it just has that nice shine to it and we have hawkins right here you see all the details the greenish white looking shading in his hair the shading in his outfit i just think the paint job looks amazing on hawkins here we see the nails on each of his fingers and this guy can throw these nails at you too as projectiles and i think the nails look good they stick on really tight to his fingers so the engineering was really good on that part and here we can see the scarecrow that Hawkins is doing. You guys can see inside his mouth with the two teeth sticking out with the red eyes, the texture around his straw-like skin. That is beautiful. Just putting on all these delicate pieces right here was such a nice thing. It's a shame that one of the red necklaces broke. And what I love with the statue is how they're depicting Zoro's move. You see that blue slash going across Hawkins like that. So I think that looks amazing. You guys see more of that blue resin right there. So vibrant looking. All right, let's look at Zoro. Zoro has a peg that attaches to the statue. And the peg is really strong. Zoro doesn't wobble at all, but you see his sandals. You see the toenails right there. If we look at this angle of Zoro, you see those calf muscles. He has those quad muscles. So, so Zoro's leg muscles are really nicely defined, but Take a look at that Wano outfit right there. You see the paint, you see the texture on it. That just looks amazing. More close up of that texturing right there. We see that purple belt where he holds his swords. And I just think the details on the swords just look amazing. They feel like metal. So that's definitely a good premium feel to have. Take a look at those muscles right there. I think Zoro used his max strength to do this attack because man, you see those biceps, the triceps right there, the chest, the ab muscles. I showed you guys the facial scope earlier, but I just think it looks amazing. The rage in his face, his teeth, they got the green spiky hair right. So I got no complaints when it comes to the facial scope right here, YouTube. That is artwork. You guys see those back muscles right there. Zoro is ripped. See him from the back view, that texturing in his Wano outfit. You really see that nice blue resin from this angle. We see the other side of Hawk and Scarecrow. See the paint, the details on what it's wearing. The other arm, like one of his hands are cut off or something. So man, I don't know how much times I'm gonna keep saying it, but the clear resin just looks nice. So when it comes to the light up for this statue, we have a plug-in that goes right here. We have two different modes for the light up, so I can't wait to test that out. and. Let's check it out, YouTube. All right, let's see what this light up feature is about, YouTube. Okay, it looks like it does a good job lighting up from the base. And also it looks like this first mode has a slow pulsating effect right here in the base. All right, let's see what the second mode does. All right, so with the second mode here, it really starts to flicker on and off. You really see it 
in the blue slash resin that Zoro was doing right here. Overall, it looks like the light up doesn't stand out too much in the daytime, but let's turn off these lights. Here's a look up of how the statue looks like in the dark time. I do have them displayed right now. You guys get a better view of how that blue and red resin just light up. Now, one thing about this statue that I'm a little upset about, I know the eyes are supposed to light up on the scarecrow, so mines can't light up for some reason. Pretty disappointed. And here's just to show you guys the flickering effect right here in the nighttime. And man, I just wish the eyes can light up on that scarecrow right there. That would have made the light up feature that much better. But overall, not too bad though when it comes to light up features. I have seen better, but this is pretty good. All right, guys, that was my unboxing of Zoro Joro versus Vassal Hawkins, a one six scale licensed statue by Jemay Palace. And yo, I'm curious what you guys think about this statue. I think it's sick, but I wanna thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Peace.